Hello friends, greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB. This is Nirish Kumar Singh and you are watching ISTQB Foundation series. We are still in chapter 3 and we will be continuing with the uh, another topic in the uh, static testing. So uh, we are moving to the next one which is called as the review process continuation. So we have a lot of topics in review process in the new syllabus. So we will be taking care of the same in different tutorials. So altogether, I'll be having around three tutorials to cover this because I just don't want to put everything together at the same time, which becomes lengthy to follow and understand as well. So in continuation of tutorial 13, we are continuing further. And today we have the review process in terms of what are the different types of review. So generally, when you talk about the types of review, this is uh, conducted in different manners. And and uh, there are lightweight review process and heavyweight review process as well. So generally the heavyweight process is called as a formal review process, which you looked in the previous tutorial all about like how exactly the formal review uh, should be conducted and at the same time, what are the major roles and responsibility of the formal review process. So here we will be understanding the four types of review, where the first one is informal review. Let's get into that. Informal review being the most uh, lightweight process does not make use of any formal process which we understood in the previous tutorial. So it doesn't have any defined stages, defined roles and responsibility or any kind of, you know, uh, activities like individual preparation, review meeting, all those uh, cost effective things are being eliminated here where we talk about like keeping it as minimal as possible and it may be it may take the form of pair programming where two people talk uh, discuss on a particular document or just uh, one person would have written it and another person just reviewing it so it's just like the best example is the buddy check which you generally do when you write your test cases you get it reviewed by somebody else and that is what you can call it as an informal review and sometimes it can also be done by a lead of your team who is doing the same job or similar job has a better experience on that it might vary in usefulness depending on the reviewer that is uh, the result outcome of that. So generally it's not mandatory to document the result. So a scribe role is not mandatory here. And the uniqueness is uh, about this particular type of review is that we do not make use of any formal process here. The main purpose is inexpensive way to get some benefit. Anyways, that means to say that anyways, you wanted to conduct this process because you have written certain test cases should be corrected by somebody else. And during that, if you can find some defects, that's really good for us. The next one is the walkthrough. And the walkthrough is a little better in terms of formal uh, review process compared to informal, but not completely formal. Now, the unique point about this particular type of review is that the meeting is led by author. But from the formal review process, we know that it's the moderator who must lead the review. That is the responsibility of a facilitator and moderator. But here we say that it is led by the author. That means author takes care of conducting the review and organizing the review for uh, calling the reviewers to go through the document and report the possible defects. It may take the form of scenarios, dry runs, peer group participations, where people from the same team, same group, or same understanding would participate into this session. Generally, we say that the test analysis could be one of the way we conduct walkthrough, or it is like design reviews, code reviews, where only developers are invited to look into that, or within that particular team, it deals with that. And when we say scenarios and dry runs, it generally means that it's not having anything to execute. So even if you talk about design and code reviews, we are not executing them. We are just trying to uh, verify them in terms of static. Open-ended session generally means that it is optional to whether conduct a pre-meeting preparation by individual reviewers or also to create the review report. So we generally do not have this and thus we do not have a scribe as well because we don't have a report review report being generated as a mandatory option. A scribe also becomes optional. In case these optional entities are opted as a yes, then of course your uh, review process may turn into formal compared to less, uh, you know, quite informal. The main purpose is learning, gaining understanding and finding defect. Even walkthrough can be also called as the KT, the knowledge transfer during the initial period of the projects. The next one is technical review. As the name suggests, it is more on the technical side where we have some standard outcomes or objectives of uh, review which are being conducted. So generally, a technical review is a little more better than walkthrough, but not completely formal due to few reasons. But the unique point says that 
The first point is the unique point about each type of review. So we say that documented, defined, defect, detection process. So at least from here, we start documenting things and also define a process which we utilize as a part of it. Includes peers and technical experts with optional management participation. So generally management is not involved here, uh, but uh, we involve people like who will be reviewing it is more on the peers and technical expert side. Maybe performed as a peer review because we involve peers there, so it can also be known as peer review. It is ideally led by a moderator, so finally in technical review, we get moderator here, and moderator leads the review and takes care of all of the major activities. Pre-meeting preparation is done by the reviewers, optionally use of checklist, uh, where it is not mandatory, if you want, you can opt for it. You want, you don't opt for it. Preparation of review report is mandatory here. And it may be, of course, uh, quite formal compared to informal if you involve management as well as you prepare the checklist. And may use of, you know, many other things like entry and exit criteria, matrix gathering, and follow-up activities and all. The main purpose is discussing, making decisions, evaluating alternatives, finding defects, solving technical problems, and checking confirmation to specifications, plans, and regulations. So as you look at the main purpose, you understand that it requires technical experts and peers to evaluate that. Anyways, let's look at the last one. Inspection, which generally means that inspection is uh, the most formal review in the types of review. So if you know the formal review process, it means that you know what is inspection. Or you know the inspection, you know the formal review. So everything happens as per the formal review process, where we have the stage-wise process, the five stages. Plus, we also have the uh, different adequate roles and responsibility distri distributed among the people. So let's look at it. Led by the trained moderator usually conducted as peer examination, defined roles and responsibilities, includes matrix gathering, formal process based on rules and checklist, specified entry and exit criteria, pre-meeting preparation, inspection report including the list of findings, and also a formal follow-up process. Where follow-up process generally means that the author follows with the uh, reviewers even after fixing the defect that is there anything new which has come up as a part of fixing the issue. It's just like a kind of regression which you take care of even in the static testing. The main purpose is only to find defect because it's completely formal and may be used for the critically uh, designed objects or complex applications or modules. So inspection is being called as the most formal thing, is going to be a little heavy and invites a lot of cost and many more people. So we just decide at any point of time depending on the work product being tested work product under static te technique, and of course, the criticality of the product. So at that point of time, if you see there's a risk involved, you need to take care of certain standards, and you need to make sure that everything is up to the mark, and uh, it might be a you know, critical and complex product which you're testing for, then you go for more formal review, which is best recommended. And other for reviews can be taken accordingly, depending on the main purpose. So anyways team, this is the part two of the review process tutorial series. So I'll be having one more tutorial to wind up this particular topic that is review process, which will talk more about the details of that. So anyways, stay tuned for this. Thanks for watching the video team. Hope in case you have not subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe and stay tuned for the latest updates on the tutorial series. Till then, take care team. Happy learning.